welcome to Excel 2016. And I'll be your host today as we go through all of Microsoft Excel 2016. Whether you're a beginner, advanced, or you've been using this since the day you were born, Microsoft Excel has something for everybody. And as we go through these lessons, I'm sure you're going to find that there are features even you didn't know were available. Let's go ahead and get started. When you first open up Excel for the first time, this is the view you're presented with. This is called the Start Screen, and this is where we have access to any recent documents that we may have worked on in the past. Additionally, we also have access to the ability to open workbooks from other sources. Beyond that, we also have access to a template view. This template view is where we have access to blank workbooks. Additionally, in newer versions of Excel, we're also provided with a tour field. So if this is the first time you've ever opened this program and you'd like to see what new features are available, this is generally the best place to find it. Additionally, we have access to a number of templates provided by Microsoft that allow us to work with files that have been created by others. This is a really quick and easy way to start very quickly. Additionally, at the top, we can search through online templates. For instance, maybe I'd like to see a grocery list. And you'll see that not only is there more than one, there are a couple, and they look very different from each other. A monthly meal plan. That might be something I need. To get back to the templates view, if you do decide to use the search feature, we're going to use the home button. But before I do, I'd like to point out that there are a number of categories. So if you're not entirely sure what it is that you're looking for, but you'd like to narrow it down just a little bit, you can always use the category selection field as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to go ahead and start with a blank workbook. To select it, I'm simply going to click, and it's going to dive me right in. I know the inclination is to do a double click, but in 2016, it's not necessary. And with that, we are plopped straight into an Excel workbook. Go ahead and pause the video for just a moment here, and join me in the blank workbook field. So let's talk about the structure of Excel. If you've used Excel in the past, not a lot's changed. We still have access to the ribbon. For those of you who aren't familiar with the ribbon, it's this giant part of the screen right here often considered to be our navigation pane. This is where we have access to all of our tools and feature sets built into Excel. So within that we have Home, Insert, Page Layout, Formulas, and so on. Inside of each tab, we have access to something called Command Groups. These are small groupings of tools based on one of two sets of criteria. Either they manipulate similar content, or they do similar things. So either they work with some of the same subjects, or their actions are all very similar. For example, we have the clipboard, which is exclusively focused on cut, copy, and paste. Beyond that, we have access to the font command group, whose explicit purpose is to manipulate text. As we go on, you'll see me reference the command groups quite a bit. And as far as learning Excel goes, it does us well to remember these command groups are often named very intuitively. So for instance, focusing on the alignment command group, I could reasonably ascertain that we're probably going to be focusing on left align, right align, uh, and so on. This is what's going to allow us to work with the alignment of the text. Hence, the alignment command group name. Each command tab has their own series of command groups. For my 2013 users, not a lot's changed. Frankly, there's not much at all that's changed. As we go through, you might notice a few things here and there, but don't worry. If you've invested a bunch of time in learning older versions of Excel, you're going to be just fine. The next thing I'd like to talk about is something that we've seen pretty much the entire time we've worked inside of Excel, but haven't given a lot of thought to. This can be found up in the top left corner. We usually know it as just the save icon or the undo icon, because that's generally all we've used it for, but it actually has a name. This is called the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar provides us access to exactly that, a series of tools based on our needs. If you click on the drop down arrow on the right hand side of this, you'll see a list of provided tools, new, open, save, email, and so on. If you're really observant, you'll notice that these checkboxes that already exist 
directly correspond with the tools that are already available in the Quick Access Toolbar. Save to save, undo and redo, to undo and redo. So logic dictates that if I add a checkbox to a tool that doesn't have a checkbox, what'll happen? If you said it'll add it to the Quick Access Toolbar, you'd be right. If I click new, voila. A tool to create new workbooks has just been added to my Quick Access Toolbar. Now I hear what you're saying. Sean, I already know the keyboard shortcut for new. I don't need that. In fact, I don't need any of these tools. None of them really strike me as something that is imminently necessary to the point where I would need to put it up here. Well, I hear what you're saying. For my users out there who are curious to know what the keyboard shortcut for a new workbook is, by the way, it's Control N. But again, I hear you. These might not necessarily be the tools that you need quick access to, but there might be a tool that you do. For example, you might notice in the font command group here, there's a blatant omission here, at least according to me. Of course, I'm talking about the strike through tool. I do a lot of collaboration in Microsoft Excel, and you might too. The strike through feature is a really useful tool. Or maybe there's another tool that you use all the time that you'd like access to. But if I click on this drop down here, I don't see access to strike through. But I do see more commands. If you notice on the right hand side of more commands, you'll see that there's an ellipsis. That dot dot dot. That dot 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 simply means that there's more behind the scenes. There's a dialogue window. So I'm going to go ahead and click on more commands here. And I gain access to a series of tools. And on the right hand side, I have my tools that are inside the quick access toolbar. My save, my undo, my redo, and so on. Now I think we can all agree that we don't need new file. So to get rid of that, I'm going to highlight it and either use the remove tool or double click. Either way, we'll remove it from your quick access toolbar. Go ahead and pause the video and let's get to this point here. Once again, to remind you how we got here, we were inside the Excel blank workbook and we navigated up to the drop down arrow on the right hand side of the quick access toolbar. Having clicked on that, we navigated down to more commands. Go ahead and do that now and join me after the break. So now what I'd like to do is I'd like to find a tool to add to my quick access toolbar. So we'll go ahead and stick with the example I gave previously. I'd like to find strike through and add it to my quick access toolbar. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. It seems like it's alphabetized. So this should be pretty easy. I'm going to get down to the bottom here. I've got my save, save as, set print shapes, but no strike through. Well, what gives? I thought this instructor knew what he was talking about. Did you figure it out? If you said it's because we're inside the popular commands drop down here, you'd be absolutely right. Despite my objections, Microsoft doesn't agree that strike through is considered a popular command. And in fact, there are a lot of tools that don't meet the criteria for being considered a popular command. One of them might also be the tool that you're thinking of that you'd like to use. So to fix that, we're going to click on this drop down arrow here. And we're going to go to all commands. This is a list of every single tool inside of Microsoft Excel, and there are a lot. How many you ask? Not a clue, a lot. In fact, most of them you'll never use, and that's okay, because this is about finding the tools we do use. In fact, we're finding the tools that we use a lot. So let's go ahead and find that strike through tool. Now the scrolling is taking a long time here, so I'm actually just gonna click inside this list and press the S key. Now at this stage right here, you can't type out the full name of the tool. I know that would be nice. Unfortunately, that functionality has just not been added yet. But it does take me at least to the S section. And I'm looking and I'm looking and strike through. Go ahead and find strike through from the all commands list. And I'd like to add it to my quick access toolbar now. So either by highlighting it and clicking the add button on the right hand side here, or by double clicking on it, let's go ahead and add it to the quick access toolbar. A common question that I often get asked is, let's say I do set all this up. Is it going to be available in all of my workbooks or just this one? And the answer is it's going to work in all of them. For as long as you have this version of Excel 
and you're on your computer, these tools will be available to you. If you'd like to reset it at any point, let's say you add 40 tools, you can always click on the reset button on the bottom right here and select either reset only quick access toolbar, or for those of you who go crazy with it and decide to customize the ribbon as well, we can reset all customizations. Now I'm not going to do that because I want strike through, but know that that's available for you. Once you've found all the tools you'd like to add to your quick access toolbar, go ahead and click OK. And just like that, I have access to strike through. How easy was that? Go ahead and pause the video and get to where I am. Once again, to reiterate, in order to customize the quick access toolbar, we clicked on the drop down arrow right here. We selected more commands. We found the tool, and if it's not inside the popular commands dropdown, we now know we can change that to all commands. From there, we find the tool in this giant list of ours, and either highlight it and select the add button, or double click to see it added to our quick access toolbar. And lastly, we click OK to lock it in. Go ahead and pause the video and do that now. Alright, so we've customized the quick access toolbar. It feels good to make the program a little bit more ours, doesn't it? In fact, Microsoft provides a lot of tools that allow us to customize different parts of the Microsoft Excel interface. And we'll talk a little bit more so about those in just a little bit. But before I do, I'd like to dive into how we can make changes to the file. Up until now, we've been referencing tabs that are to the right of the home tab. These are tabs where we can make changes within the file. However, there's one tab out of all of these that is slightly unlike the other. In this case, I'm talking about File. Go ahead and find the File tab, and let's click inside of it. And with a swoopy animation, we dive into what we like to call the Backstage View. This is where we can make changes about the file. All other tabs inside of Excel make changes inside the file. But this is where we can see the grand scheme of things, if you will. At the very top, we have access to Info, where we can protect our workbook, inspect our workbook, manage our workbook, and even view options. As we go throughout the lessons inside of Excel, we'll talk a little bit about more of these. Inside the new view here, we see exactly the same view we saw inside of our start screen, our templates. Of course, we can always select our blank workbook, and yet again we have access to our search bar so we can search for online templates. The Open tab does exactly that. It opens any workbooks that we may have available to us. And in 2016, it's easier than ever to open from online storage solutions. In this case, I have several OneDrive accounts connected, as well as a SharePoint site for those of you who operate inside SharePoint environments. Additionally, I also have access to files on my PC, and if I'm not sure, and I would just like to get to a more familiar view, I can always click Browse, and that'll bring up my open view. Additionally, I have access to Save and Save As, however, because I've not saved this file yet at all, I can't use the Save button. For those of you who aren't sure what the difference is, Save As creates a new copy of a file that you may have already saved before. Save, on the other hand, only works if a file has already been saved and already has a place that you can save it to. If you've never defined a save point, save won't work, and it'll force you into the save as view, as you can see by my clicks here. No matter how many times I click on save, it forces me into the save as view. Print brings us down into our print preview field, where we can make a number of changes before we select the final print. Inside of Share, we have the ability to work with a number of different features here, and this is kind of cool. We've actually seen some expanded options. We now have access to something called the Share with People. Now, there's another place that we're going to have access to this, but I'd like to point out here that before we can do anything, we have to save our document to a OneDrive location. Once we've done that, we'll be able to do just that, Share with People. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Within email, we can send as an attachment. For those of you who have Outlook set up, or another default file email solution, clicking this button will open up Outlook, open up a Compose email, 
and attach that file all in one click. And that feels pretty good. We additionally have the ability to send as a PDF or XPS file. Additionally, we're seeing a resurgence in the present online feature. This allows us to present this program in a Skype meeting or conversation. For those of you who are working in environments that are going to be engaging in Skype for Business, this is going to be a really powerful tool. And lastly, we have Send by Instant Message. So, for all of you who work in corporate environments, if you've got Skype for Business already interacted, you can actually save this via Skype for Business, or for those of you who are more familiar with the older version of this link, to anyone on our network. Everyone gets a copy, and everyone gets an instant message. Underneath Share, we have Export. This allows us to either create it as a PDF or XPS file, or change the file type to a number of different options found here on the right. Where else do we have access to this? Well, funny you should ask, there it is right there. These are all things that we can do inside the Save As dialog box as well. Underneath Export we have Publish, which is exclusively focused on Power BI, something that has newly been implemented out of the box inside of Excel 2016. Underneath Publish we have Close, which will do exactly that. Don't click on this just yet. Underneath that we have Account, where you can see information about the account here. And interestingly enough, we can also change the theme here. Now, what does that mean to change the theme? Well, I'll show you. This isn't the best view to do it, but I will show you shortly. You can also see any connected services that might have been placed here. Lastly, let's talk options. Go ahead and find options on the very bottom here and click on it. This is where we can change a lot of deep down features inside of Excel. Things from the default file font to where these files get saved. But this is also where we can change the office theme. And this is where we come back to the ability to customize this program to our liking. In Excel 2016, and in fact all of Office 2016, we see that these programs have gotten a new colorful option. Now this theme is being provided across all of those programs, but we do have the ability to change that. Currently we find here in the Office theme that we can change it from colorful to maybe a more familiar view. If I select the white Office theme and click OK, all of my Excel 2013 users are going to breathe a sigh of relief, because this is a much more familiar view. The file tab now has its distinguished coloration, the remaining tabs do not. Additionally, we've been provided one more theme because two wasn't enough. We have the dark gray theme. And this one is brand new to Microsoft Excel and all of the Office productivity programs. This provides a dark user interface for the very first time, and it's getting rave reviews from users who prefer a dark user interface, whether because the white is too bright or because they need something that's a little bit more calming to the eyes. The dark user interface is a really cool feature that's been built in new to Office 2016. Personally, I prefer the colorful theme, so I'm going to stick with that for the duration of this presentation, but do know that you have these options available. Go ahead and play around with those options here for just a moment, and let's join us back after the break. Once again, to get into that view, we jumped into the file, options, and within options, we had access to the Office theme. We also had access to the Office theme inside the file account, where we can change the Office theme here as well. So however you'd like to do it, go ahead and try that and come back after that. So now that we've seen a little bit about what's new inside of Excel, let's talk about some things that have stayed the same. On the top left hand side, we have access to our cell map field here. This tells us where our active cell is. So for instance, currently it's in cell A1, an amalgamation of the column value A and the row value 1, A1. However, if I place my cursor anywhere else, I can see exactly where that is without having to make that juxtaposition of D and 9 in this case. I can simply look up here in the top left corner and see that I am currently inside cell D9. 
Beyond that, on the right hand side, I have the formula bar. The formula bar is where I can manipulate things going on inside of that cell. Additionally, I also have access to my insert functions tool, which we'll talk about in a little bit. On the right hand side, we have access to our trusty scroll bar. This is where we can scroll up and down, and if you'd like to, additionally, right and left, using these scroll bars found to the right and on the bottom. Simply by clicking and holding the scroll bar, we can do that, sliding to the left and right using the bottom scroll bar, or up and down using the right scroll bar. Additionally, I can use these arrows to expand or contract my view in the upward or downward direction, or the right and left direction as necessary. As with all Microsoft programs in the top right hand corner, I have access to my trusty three here, minimize, maximize, or restore depending on the view you're in, and quit. Additionally to the left we have a new button here, the ability to collapse our ribbon view. So for instance if you're working on a screen that is less than the size you'd like it to be and you need more working space, you can select the display ribbon options and auto hide the ribbon. This completely removes the ribbon from view and when we need it we click on that ellipses that pops up at the top and we gain access to it again. Once again if you're in this view simply find the ellipses and give it a click and it will reveal itself to you. However to lock it in you're going to need to select that same tool again and deselect by selecting the show tab and commands. Go ahead and take an opportunity to play with those features for just a moment and come back to me. Now no matter what version of Excel you're coming from, there are two things for sure that you had to have noticed that are very different from any other version of Excel ever. And we'll talk about both of them, but let's go ahead and start with this one right here because we've already seen an example of where this tool also exists in other parts of this program. This is called the share button. The share button allows us to do just that. Share the workbook we're in to encourage collaboration or to submit a final product. Go ahead and click on the share tool and you'll see that the first thing it asks us to do is save a copy of our file to an online location and it provides us with a button to do just that, save to the cloud. In order to use this tool, you do need to save to the cloud. So I'll go ahead and do just that. I'm going to click on save to the cloud here, and it's going to ask me where I'd like to save it. And of course it provides my save as menu, which we've seen already. I'm going to go ahead and save it to my OneDrive account. And maybe I'll go ahead and call this Excel 2016 training. And I'll go ahead and click save. and just like that I've saved it to the cloud. Once I've saved it to the cloud I'm provided with new share options. I can invite people and depending on what it is that I'm asking for I can control how they have access to this file. So depending on who it is I can ask them to view the file and edit it or maybe I'd only like them to view it and give me their thoughts in a separate medium. I don't necessarily want them to have access to my functions and formulas or any of my raw data to mess up or accidentally delete. Lastly, I can create a message asking them for either general assistance or maybe more specific things. At the very bottom here, we have access to anybody who has already been shared this file. Currently, I'm the only one, and you can see, as denoted by the owner tag, that I'm the only person that has access to this because I'm the one that created it. Once you've invited somebody, you simply click the share button. And once they've accepted it, you'll be able to see their name populate on the list down here below. Go ahead and close that. Now we've almost come to a close on our tour of the interface of Microsoft Excel 2016. But there's one part of the ribbon left that we haven't talked about yet, and it's the biggest one. In fact, it's the biggest change to ever come to the Microsoft Office ribbon since the introduction of the ribbon. It's called the Tell Me Bar, and it's indicated by a light bulb followed by the phrasing, Tell Me What You Want To Do. 
Now I know that sounds a little vague and a little too open, but that's because this tool is so powerful that that's all it needs is for you to talk to it. For instance, let's say I don't remember how to insert a column. So in this field right here, I'm just going to go ahead and click inside and say, how do I insert a column? And check it out. The tool that pops to the top of the list is the insert tool. And it's not just what that tool is. Oh, lost it there. But if I hover over it, check it out. I can either insert individual cells, I can insert rows, or there it is. Insert entire columns or sheets. If I give it a click, it doesn't just show me where it is. It actually inserted an entirely new column for me. This is a game-changing feature because there are so many tools inside of Microsoft Excel. There's no way you're going to remember where all of them are. And for the times where you don't remember, you don't have to Google it anymore. You don't have to Bing it if that's your thing too. All you have to do is go to the Tell Me bar and say, hey, how do I add comments? And there it is, the insert comment feature. The Tell Me feature is a huge introduction into navigating this increasingly complex program. And while Microsoft has made huge strides in terms of making this a more usable program, not everybody is going to remember where everything is. And that's okay, and in fact it's easier than ever to not remember with a tool like this. Go ahead and take a moment to try it out for yourself, the Tell Me Bar. It's a huge introduction into Microsoft Excel navigation and it could potentially change the way you interact with this program entirely. All right, so while we're on the topic of new features being introduced into Excel 2016, let's not stop there. I've got one more amazing feature I'd like to show you. Even cooler than, potentially, the Tell Me Bar. Inside this worksheet right here, I've got access to three cells with some content in it I might not understand. For instance, why oh why? Now, why oh why would I put that inside of a worksheet? Well, why oh why would anybody? Well, it's because it means something to some people. And you might not be entirely sure what it means either. Now, where do you turn if you don't understand something? Well, in 2015, most of us Google it. However, with the introduction of this new feature that I'm about to tell you about, Excel doesn't need you to jump out of the program in order to look it up. Go ahead and find a cell, or in this case, in your worksheet, Type the words YOY, or the letters. Once you've done that, go ahead and give it a right click. And there's a new tool that's been introduced into the right click submenu. It's called Smart Lookup. So having highlighted that cell, find the Smart Lookup tool and click on it. And we get a new pane called the Insights pane to pop up here. And just like that, it's identified what this potentially could mean. In this case here, YOY may refer to the YOI language, however, more than likely inside of the spreadsheet, that's not the case. And as we go a little bit further, we see that it's potentially an abbreviation for year over year, which is an easier way of identifying how we compare last year's performance to this year's performance. The Insights pane provides us with not only definitions, but it'll do a web search to provide top links. Here we go here, Investopedia. So now we get a full breakdown of what exactly YOY is, if this is exactly what we're looking for, and it is. Let's try another tool. I'm gonna go ahead and right click on FY here, and I'm gonna try a smart lookup again. Now in this case here, my first two options, the FY postcode area, and Feng Yun aren't necessarily exactly what I'm looking for, so let's scroll down a little bit further and see if we can find some relevant context. And there it is right there. The very top web search. A fiscal year. So now I can see that some of these are finance terms. Let's try one more. Satya Nadella. Now a lot of people have heard this name, but may not necessarily know where they've heard it from. Once again, this time, actually, instead of doing my right click and smart lookup, I'm going to go ahead and navigate up to the Tell Me Bar. Now I know that the Tell Me Bar can tell me where these tools are that are available to me, but what happens if I type something that isn't a tool, maybe something I'd like to search? 
Once it's identified that I'm typing something that isn't a tool, it's either going to provide me help or offer to do a smart lookup on it. So I'm going to do that. And there it is, Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft. It's provided his Wikipedia. It's also provided a Bing image search. If there was any doubt about what the web engine backing all of this was, search no further. Of course it's provided by Bing. This is Microsoft finally stretching its muscles a little bit in terms of the experience and data that it's collected with its Bing search engine over the years. So there you have it. Once again, to use the Smart Lookup feature, simply find a cell, right-click on it, and select Smart Lookup, or from the Tell Me bar, simply type what it is you're not sure of, in our case, Satya Nadella, and select Smart Lookup from the drop-down menu. Go ahead and pause the video to check that new feature out. There's a couple of other fundamentals within the Excel interface that we should talk about before we move any further. The first one is really important. On the top left hand side, you'll see that we have A1 listed in this little box here. Now this isn't a cell, this is actually telling us what cell our current active selection is. You'll notice that I currently have A1 selected. This is the name box. The name box tells us exactly where our current active selection cell is. So let's say I click into cell C3. You'll notice that now it's changed to C3. This is to allow us to know exactly what cell we have selected, no matter where we are in the spreadsheet. While it's relatively easy when we're talking about A1 or C3, when we get a little bit farther out, like for instance here in C P14, it's a little bit more tedious to have to go all the way to the left to see that we're in row 14, and then all the way up to the top to see that we're in the column P. So using the name box makes a big difference. As we get a little bit further, you'll also see when we have certain fields selected, if they're named ranges or tables, the named box will tell us the names of those fields as well. To the right of that, we have access to the formula bar. The formula bar not only tells us what formulas are happening behind the scenes within a cell, but it'll also just tell us what's inside the cell. So for example here, if in cell A2, I just type the number 2, the formula bar tells me that that's exactly what's going on inside the cell. However, if inside the cell I have 1 plus 1, you'll see that while the cell itself does say 2, when I select it, the formula bar actually tells me what's really happening behind the scenes. It's calculating 1 plus 1. So the formula bar allows us to see behind the looking glass, if you will, to allow us to understand better what's going on inside of our spreadsheets. This is also where we can make changes to the cell, so instead of double clicking on the cell to make changes, we can click inside the formula bar, and let's say that I'd like this formula to be 1 plus 2. Once I hit enter there, you'll see that the cell itself changes as well. The formula bar allows us to make widespread changes without having to bury ourselves within the actual cell spreadsheet. This kind of keeps us a little bit more focused on the formula and not the content happening around the cell. On the very bottom of our sheet, we have our status bar. Our status bar, of course, has existed since 2007. This tells us whether or not we are in the middle of using a tool or whether or not there are instructions that we need to be made aware of. Currently, Excel is ready to go. If you right click on the status bar, you can add additional features here. For example, maybe I'd like to see whether or not I can flash fill. Or maybe I'd like to see whether or not signatures are available in a particular field. This allows me to make a number of different changes without having to think too hard about where to go. On the bottom right hand side, we have access to our view fields. So I can change between my standard view. I can change to my print preview view. I can change to a number of different setups within that. To the right of that, I have my zoom feature here, where I can use my minus or my plus sign to increase or decrease my zoom level of the spreadsheet. Now here's a fun little trick within that. If you press and hold the control key and use the scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out using that feature set as well. In fact, that's generally my preferred method of zooming in and out. And lastly, on the right hand side, we have our scroll bars. Now, of course, our scroll bars allow us to do exactly that, scroll throughout the spreadsheet, either by clicking and holding the scroll bar, 
and dragging up and down. However, you'll notice that it only lets me go down to row 21. However, if I use that downward arrow to keep clicking, it'll take me even further. Additionally, the same methodology applies to my down scroll bar here, allowing me to scroll from left to right. However, once again, you'll see that it only lets me go as far as column R, unless I use my arrows, in which case it allows me to go even further. So there you have it. Go ahead and take this opportunity to try that out and explore the interface a little bit more so before we carry on. There's a lot of different ways to navigate within Microsoft Excel. Of course, we've always been able to point and click to get to the cell we'd like to go to, but it's not always the most precise methodology to do just that. Alternatively, we've always also been able to use the arrow keys. So let's say I'd like to go down a cell. Simply tapping on the down arrow key allows me to do just that. Tapping on the right arrow key allows me to go to one cell to the right. Tapping on the up arrow key allows me to go one cell up. And the left arrow key allows me to jump to the cell to my left. Now, one cell at a time may not necessarily be your cup of tea. For example, maybe you'd like something a bit more extreme that allows you to jump to the furthest reaches of a data set. Do you happen to know how many rows are inside of Microsoft Excel? Well, you can find out. By pressing and holding the control key, and then tapping the down arrow, you'll see it flings us all the way to the furthest reaches of Microsoft Excel. In this case, we see that the furthest row possible inside of this program is row 1,048,576. Tapping on the home key, or in this case, control home key, allows me to go back to the original cell that I was in. Were you curious to see how many columns are inside of Microsoft Excel? Well, we saw that the right arrow key, by itself, only takes us one cell to one cell. But pressing and holding the modifier key, the control key, and then tapping the right arrow key flings us all the way to column value XFD. That's pretty far out. Hopefully that's enough cells for you. Once again, I'm going to press and hold the control key and tap the home key, and this is going to bring me back to cell A1. So a couple of different ways to navigate within the spreadsheet. Additionally, we're able to select cells in a number of different ways, either using the mouse by clicking and dragging. But again, this might not necessarily be the most precise methodology. We saw that pressing and holding the control key enhanced our arrow keys. What about the shift key? Well, if you press and hold the shift key and use the arrow keys, you'll see that I'm able to select multiple fields of cells. Now I'm tapping the down arrow key in this instance. And once I've done that, let's say all the way down to row 10, let's say I'd like to expand outward to column F. So I'll tap my right arrow key twice, and you'll see that it selects the values as necessary. All really quick and easy ways to navigate throughout the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Go ahead and pause the video and try that for yourself. We're starting to see that Pressing and combining keys allows us to enhance the feature sets of our keyboard. These are called keyboard shortcuts, and they're really popular among power users and the average everyday users alike. Let's talk about a couple of other ones that we have available to us. For example, let's say I'd like a new workbook. Well, I could go to the File tab and select New, and then pick the template from there. However, that's a lot of steps, when all I really need is a blank workbook. By pressing and holding the control key and tapping the N key, you'll see that it's jumped me into a brand new Excel workbook. I'm now in the generic workbook, Book 2. Let's say I'd like to open up a file that I already have saved somewhere. Well, if control N for new creates a new workbook, any guesses what the keyboard shortcut for open would be? If you're saying to yourself, control O, you'd be absolutely right. Once again, by pressing the modifier key control and tapping the O key, you'll see it flings us into the open dialog. This is where I have access to any recent files I might have been working in, any online cloud drives I might have access to, or any files I have on my PC. So if control N for new creates a new workbook and control O opens up a new workbook, any guesses what save is? If you said control S, you'd be absolutely right once again. Good guesses. By pressing and holding the control key and tapping the S key, 
you'll see it flings me into, well, this is interesting, the save as dialog box. In case you missed out on this when I mentioned it earlier, when you haven't saved a file before, it forces you into the save as dialog box. So let's say that I'd like to save as now. I'm going to go ahead and create a location because of course save can't create a file, only save as can. So I'm going to go ahead and save mine to the desktop and call this practice save. So now that I've saved my file, I'll try my keyboard shortcut control S again and nothing happens, at least not as far as I can tell, but it is actually saving my file. We just can't see it now because save is doing its job. It's just overwriting the existing file. Now with that being said, what's the keyboard shortcut for save as? What if I don't want to overwrite my existing file? I'd like to save it as a new copy. Well, in this case here, up until now, we've been served some softballs with these keyboard shortcuts. Control N is new. Control O is open. Control S is save. So what's save as? It's not Control S A. It's actually just the F12 key. So if you tap the F12 key, it'll jump you straight into the Save As dialog box. This is also where we can save this document as any type of file that Excel is capable of exporting into. Here in the Save As type, you'll see that it's currently saving it as an Excel workbook. If I click on that, you can see all the different types of documents that I'm able to save this Excel spreadsheet as. I can save it as a workbook. For my power users, I can save it as a macro-enabled workbook. For those of you who work with organizations or divisions that might have older versions of Microsoft Excel, they can't read the newer versions of Microsoft Excel workbooks. Anything from 2007 on can't be read by a Excel 2003 or earlier version of Excel. So in those instances, we might actually need to save it as Excel 97 to 2003, or the .xls document workbook. We can save it as a web page. When we get a little bit farther into these lessons, you'll see that we have the ability to save these documents as templates. Now there's a lot of other options within that here, and of course I encourage you to explore the ones that make the most sense to you. One that of course I'd be remiss to not point out would be the PDF and XPS file formats allowing us to save these documents in the PDF file styling. So we see that we have a lot of different ways that we can export this workbook. In this case here, I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone. Go ahead and take this opportunity to practice a couple of those keyboard shortcuts. We'll be introducing them as we go along throughout this lesson, but it's important to note that quite a few of these file tools do have keyboard shortcuts. In case you're ever not sure if a tool does or does not have a keyboard shortcut, if it's inside the ribbon here, for instance bold, just go ahead and hover over it, and you'll see that bold, immediately to the right of that, has control B in parentheses. This allows us to see that it has a keyboard shortcut. So if I tried the control B keyboard shortcut, it would bold the text that I have selected. Many tools have keyboard shortcuts, so I do encourage you to just highlight some of these. For instance, fill color does not. However, making text bigger, well, in this case, does not as well. There's one. Control U for underline. Go ahead and pause the video for just a moment and try some of these keyboard shortcuts out, and maybe try to see if your favorite tool has a keyboard shortcut all on its own.